Hi, I'm Tom Richardson for Boating Local, and today I'm here in Marion, Massachusetts, home of Sperry Sales. Now, Sperry's been building custom sails out of Marion for the last 35 years, 15 of those out of this facility, not far from the Marion waterfront. Now, over the years, the company's uh, built a reputation for combining the best of old-fashioned sail-making skills and know-how with modern technology. And today, uh, Chief Designer Ben Sperry is going to show us how that all comes together by walking us through the sail-making process. Ben Sperry grew up around the water and remains an avid sailor and racer, and he brings this experience with him to the sailmaking process at Sperry Sails. Ben and his team of sailmakers work out of a long wooden loft and an adjoining former residential home tucked away on a back street of Marion. The atmosphere at the loft is laid back and fun, as Bunbury, the resident loft dog, can attest. Well, Ben, obviously when it comes to building a sail, there's a lot of variables, a lot of factors involved. How does the whole process begin uh, for you guys here? Um, whether it's a phone call or an email or, or someone dropping by the loft, we, you know, they, our customer will present a, a problem or a, or a need to us in terms of what they're looking for. And what we do is, is come up with a plan, whether it's going and sailing with them to determine what they need or looking at a sail plan or, or some combination of the two. Um, we can come up with a plan and, and turn it into a design. Mm -hmm. And so your job is to, you know, as the designers, to take all the information that you gather from the from the customer, his wants, his needs for the sale for his boat, and then uh, basically uh, come up with a design on paper, and then ultimately feed it into a computer system. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, like you said, there are a lot of factors, and, and uh, some things can be very straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. Right. After the initial information gathering process, Ben sits down at his drafting table and begins plotting the sail design. The numbers are then entered into a computer program to create a virtual model of the sail. You can see a basic sort of a plan view here on the screen. and. Um, this again, this is almost a reproduction of what you might see here. This is a mainsail on a 52 foot boat. Um, and this software, you know, there, there's quite a range of input, but you can see the, the length of the three edges, the luff at 61.6 .6 and the leech and, and then the square, square footage of the sail. And then from, from that, we can sort of, again, get our basic inputs and then we start working with the three dimensions. Um, and so you see on this plan, there's actually, I've, I've drawn in the rig and how that relates to the sail, um, which in a basic sense doesn't make a huge difference, but it is really, really important to be able to see the rig relative to all of the differences. Well, we're in the main loft building right now. This is where the sails are actually made. Ben, what's going on now at, uh, at this particular computer that you've got uh, set up here? This computer is showing a screen which this, this program is designed to take panels that are computed from our sail design software and take those computed panels and then be able to plot them on our cutter. And so what you see here is actually a sail. This is a relatively small sail divided into six or seven panels and then also the reinforcement patches that are in the corners. And what we can do is essentially drag um, drag pieces of the sail and drop them into that screen. This screen here represents the cutter. And so mm -hmm. this is all very, you know, very much precision. It'll cut exactly what we designed. Once the virtual panels have been assembled on the computer screen, the chosen sail material is unrolled on the cutting table and a vacuum applied to remove any wrinkles. Then with the push of a button, the automated cutting arm goes to work. So you, we've got the panel that just uh, came off the table. So the idea, Ben, is that you just basically put the panels together and start sewing them? 
Right, yeah, essentially. So we, we would actually lay the panels out on the floor mm -hmm. and um, we apply a double-sided tape to the edge where the seam in the, in the panels belongs mm -hmm. and then we stick them together. And, uh, the double-sided tape works well enough that you can just stick it and sew it. Excellent. Let's see. Well, let's move, let's move on to the sewing machine. Okay, so Jesse is over here at the, uh, the sewing machine and uh, explain a little bit about what, what's, uh, what, what she's doing right here. Jesse is sewing reinforcement patches on the on the sail to basically back up the points on the sail that will be that will receive the most load from from whether it's reefed or fully hoisted. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see there there are multiple layers that are all stuck together and then sewn together in the corner. And, uh, so this isn't obviously your mom's Singer sewing machine. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little more high tech. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And yeah, you know, this machine can sew through very thick, durable layers of fabric. Mm -hmm. It's uh, pneumatic, and, and the needle is cooled by air, and it's uh, yeah. it's a pretty wild machine. Yeah, but you, you don't you, you want to be paying attention while you're using this thing too. Yeah, so, I would not hesitate. Okay. Well, let's not distract her any longer. <laughs> I don't want to be responsible. After the sail is stitched together along with the reinforcements, it's time to add the finishing touches such as telltales, slides, reefing points, grommets, and other custom features. So what we've got here is a finished sail. It's got all kinds of the bells and whistles on it. Why don't you walk us through some of the final stuff you need to add to a sail before it's ready to, to go out the door. Well, you can see that there's some hardware here, and it's reinforced with webbing, and, and there's a you know high-tech rope running up one edge of the sail, and, and sail slides that'll fit to the mast. And yeah, that looks this, fair, look, looks fairly complicated. A lot of work must go into just this part of the sail alone. Yeah, yeah, you. Um, it, it's amazing how much time you can put into finishing a sail off. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but that's that's where that's where I think some of the the hand craftsmanship and where the you know. Mm -hmm. Knowing knowing your sailmaker helps, you know, you can trust that this will be taken to the yeah. to the degree that it needs to be taken. Yeah, well there's a lot to say for having custom work done like that. When the sail is finished, it's given a final inspection, folded and placed in a bag. Well, Ben, you got it. You walked us through uh, the the steps of making the sail from the computer all the way to well, this. This is the final product right here. You get the sail all rolled up and packaged in a nice bag like this, and then uh, you got one happy customer, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and you, how far do you ship these? You ship all over the world, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we've we've shipped to Puerto Rico and. We'll have one going down to Chile uh, this summer, so yeah. yeah well. That's great. Well, like I said, there'll be a happy uh, sailor when he opens up the mailbox and, and this baby's inside.